Welcome to part one of the CMT Research Foundation's CMT 101 series. In today's webinar, I'll cover an overview of CMT as well as the peripheral nervous system. I'm going to start off by highlighting some of the key facts about CMT. It's the most common genetic disorder of peripheral nerves. Its prevalence is 1 in 2,500 people which means about 150,000 affected individuals in the U.S. with about 3 million worldwide. Since it affects peripheral nerves in the body, it's commonly characterized by loss of sensation and muscle wasting of the limbs. This leads to balance issues, foot abnormalities, and difficulty walking. Other symptoms are possible also depending on which nerves in the body are affected. It's a progressive disease meaning it gets worse with time. There's no cure or effective treatment. It's also highly variable. Many genes are responsible for CMT. The age of onset can be anywhere from childhood to adult, and the degree of disability varies from mild to severe. What is the peripheral nervous system? In the simplest viewpoint, the peripheral nervous system, or the PNS for short, is a system that allows nerve signals to be transmitted throughout the body, much like the power lines which connect power plants to various buildings in our community. We have two types of nervous systems in our body. The central nervous system, or the CNS for short, here in pink, is made up of the brain and spinal cord, and then the peripheral nervous system, or the PNS, in blue, is made up of sensory and motor nerves. The PNS carries out four major functions in the body. It connects the CNS to the various organs, limbs, and skin. And through these connections, it allows the CNS to receive and send information to other areas of the body. Specifically, the PNS carries sensory and motor info to and from organs, limbs, and skin. This is why you can play the violin or run on a soccer field or feel pain when you touch a hot stove. The PNS also regulates involuntary body functions like heartbeat and breathing. Given the many types of things that PNS does, it's not surprising that CMT could have effects throughout the body. Important for our understanding of CMT are some basic facts about nerve cells of the PNS. Signals are carried by the axons of nerves. Axons can be very long. The ones that innervate your toes or fingers reach all the way from your spinal cord to your fingers and toes. To enhance the propagation of the signal down the axon, axons are covered by an insulating material called myelin. This situation is very similar to what occurs in the electrical wires you're familiar with in your home. Myelin is produced by cells, which are called Schwann cells, and the myelin wraps around the axon. CMT can cause two types of nerve dysfunction. In the first, the myelin sheath decays, and this is called demyelination. With the loss of the myelin insulation, the nerve signal down the axon is slowed. The second type of nerve dysfunction in CMT occurs when the axon itself degrades. When this happens, fewer nerves are available to send signals in the body. The nerves with the longest axons tend to be the most affected. Thus, symptoms in CMT often start in the feet and spread up the leg the hands and the arms become affected next. I'll leave you with three main take-home points from this webinar. The first is that CMT is a disorder of peripheral nerves. Second, peripheral nerves carry information to and from the brain and spinal cord or the central nervous system, the CNS. And finally, CMT causes nerve dysfunction in two ways, degeneration of the myelin sheath surrounding axons or degeneration of the axons themselves.
I hope you'll tune in for other webinars in the CMT Research Foundation's CMT 101 series. In part two, I'll discuss the genetics of CMT, and in part three, therapy development for CMT.